<laughs> okay, so we're here at Marvelous Designer. When you open it, it should look kind of like this. You should have a default garment and a default avatar. And your screen should pretty much look like this right here. So we're going to need to change it so that we can work with our kimono dev kit. So first thing we we'll need to do is uh, bring in our avatar. So we're going to go file, import, oh no, file, open, so file, open, and then avatar. And then you're going to navigate to the folder where you exported your kimono body. I have my hair in this new kimono folder. And we're going to just check uh, kimono body because that's what I named it. So did you pick whatever you named it. And when you do, you'll get this little OBJ avatar, uh, avatar, avatar uh, thing where it's asking you what scale do you want them to import it in. You're just going to check the little inbox that's at the bottom and hit OK. And you see, it brings it in perfectly in scale. So you don't have to type in any numbers or remember any numbers. Okay, so once you have your avatar in, we need to get rid of the default garment that's here. Unless you want it, but it'll be way too big for the kimono. So it was best to just to get rid of it. So what we're going to do is go over to the top again and we're going to go file and then new and it will erase the um, garment from the body. So um, what do we have to do now? Now we have to start making our clothes. Now some people have told me that when they start up Marvel's Designer for some reason the 2D pattern tools are disabled. So we're just going to enable those. So if you open up your... Um, what's this called your models designer and you notice that you don't have a lot of buttons up here it's just, just these like this you need to enable your 2d pattern so you do that by right clicking on the gray space that's right here and you want to check the box that says 2d pattern toolbar now when you do that you'll see a whole bunch of tools come up and I'm going to explain to you what these tools are and how you work them so um that's a little loud. What's chasing you? Really, really giant, giant thing. Uh. Trees at me. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for turning it down. Mm -hmm. That's much better. Thank you. Sorry about that. So now I'm gonna describe to you how to use this, and if you already did our previous class where we talk about Marvelous Designer and how to use it, then you can pretty much skip this video because there's nothing different about it. If you mastered making Marvelous clothes with Marvelous Designer on one body, making it on this body is pretty much the exact same thing. This part of the tutorial is pretty much aimed at people who never used Marvelous Designer before and are just, you know, starting out and want to learn the basics. So that's what I'm teaching right now. But if you already used this and you followed along before, there's no use in wasting your time here. You can already go to our next video. Okay, so now that those guys are gone, let me show you how to work on, um, how to make patterns. So, to make up, how Marvel Designer works is that you make patterns in a 2D window, sew them in a 3D window, sync it, and do the, uh, fabric simulation, and you're just modifying the pattern until it gets to the, the general shape of what you want, and then you export it and rig it. So, to make patterns, you're going to use this tool the most. This is the polygon tool, and it allows you to create any kind of shape you want. Um, as long as you connect the dot back to the first dot. Next to that you'll see is the rectangle tool and it allows you to create easy rectangles like so. So you don't have to use the polygon tool and try to make a perfect rectangle which is great for people like me who are blind. Next to that one is the circle tool and allows you to make the impossible circle with ease. I mean just trying to imagine making a circle with the polygon tool is pretty hard. So you can just use that tool and it makes a nice smooth circle for you to work with. So I'm pressing new and get rid of this stuff. Um, next to these are you'll see red internal tools. So in order to use the internal tool you first have to have a pattern. So I'm just going to use the rectangle tool here and create a test square. And then you're going to grab the internal tools. And they work just like the external tools, except you don't need to connect the lines back to the beginning. So we can make any kind of zigzag, crazy shape we want, and then just double click, and the shape is done. Whereas with the po regular polygon tool, if we were to do the same thing, it won't register as a pattern until we connect it here. The internal tools aren't bound by that rule. 
So you may be wondering why do you need to make internal shapes? Well, let's say you wanted to make a dress and you wanted ruffles to be sewn along the edges, like the inside of it, layered ruffles. You would just create your pattern and then you would make internal lines and then you would sew your ruffle fabrics to these lines directly and that'll let you do stuff like that. Uh, the internal box tool is also the same thing. Internal rectangle tool, the same thing. Makes internal rectangles and internal circle, same thing. Another fun thing about the internal tools is that you can actually, let me turn on this button. We'll talk about that button in a second. You can use your internal tools and convert them into holes. So let's click, right click on our internal rectangle and then you can see the button that says convert to hole and boom, you have it. Square, uh, torn hole into your simulate your garment but we don't want holes and stuff like that right now that's for later oh you can also use the internal stuff to make creases and folds and uh, strings of elastic and things like that but that's for another tutorial you just have fun playing around with it it's it's totally fun so we're gonna see this button that I just pressed this is the sync button when you go to create a pattern It'll show up over here on a 3D window once you press the sync button. If you don't have the sync button pressed and you go and modify your pattern like so, you'll see it doesn't change over here in a 2D, uh, 3D window. But once you turn your sync on, you'll see that your pattern has changed. So if you go and you're working on your patterns and your clothes and stuff and you're moving the pattern about and you notice that it's not changing in the 2D in the 3D window, you may have your uh, sync turned off. So you want to make sure that your sync is on when you want it to well sync up the 2D window to sync up on the 3D window side. So we're going to get rid of this and we're going to talk about the actual sewing now. But in order to talk about sewing, I think we need to get into pattern making. So once we have, it makes it a lot easier to show you that. So um, what we're going to do is make our first garment, our first outfit, uh, a t-shirt and a pair of pants. Because I believe that once you learn how to make a t-shirt, everything else just, con a t-shirt and a pair of pants, everything else just falls into place. Because um, although Marvel's designer goes by the rules of making clothes like real life pattern making so if you know how to make patterns in real life you could totally apply that in here but if you don't they still allow you to use it because all you have to do is basically draw the shape of the garment that you want and sew it together with the exception of some skirts and dresses that works like 95 percent of the time <laughs> okay so what we're going to do is make our t-shirt and I'm going to zoom in on the um, 2D window and you can zoom in by rolling your mouse wheel towards you as rolling it away from you makes it zoom out, rolling it towards you pulls it closer. And if you find that it's a little bit laggy, you could just turn off the sync for a second and you can get a bit speed, more speed in. So we're going to grab, we're going to zoom in pretty close, like this close. <laughs> and we're going to start with our t-shirt. So if what you want to do is grab the polygon tool. And you want to start at this fold line. It's also called a center line, but I like to call it a fold line. So fold line, center line, this line that goes straight down the middle of your character, whichever. And we're going to start here to build our t-shirt. So the first thing you're going to do is place, click on how deep you want your neckline to be. So I'm going to start right here. And then you're going to go up to your shoulder. And then click again and make another dot. And now you're going to determine how long you want your t-shirt sleeve to be. So I say about right here should be a good length for a t-shirt maybe three dots in and now you want to make it how wide you want the sleeves to be now for an easy like if you want it really skin tight you would put it very close to the arm but I've noticed that doing so causes a lot of clipping uh, when you go into sewing so I always like to make it maybe a half a box lower than what I really want it to be so about here and then you just want to drag the next one underneath the armpit and now you're going to make it the next point as long as you want your shirt to be so if you want a crop top or a belly shirt you can make it like up here or right here but I want a nice long kind of t-shirt so right here at the waistline and then you're just gonna go right into the middle now if you have a hard time um, moving this and making straight lines you can hold down the shift key and it opens it activates a snap guide so you can snap easily and makes nice straight lines uh, in case you're blind like me and you're going to stop there, line, right here at the middle fold. And you're just going to go right back to the first. 
and that's pretty much how you make your t-shirt it's kind of like a Y shirt <laughs> alright so we have one half of our pattern we're going to click this little box right here this one that says edit pattern this tool and we're going to right click on the fold line and you're going to say unfold now another thing I like to do is I like to delete the little dots that come in from the fold this one at the bottom it just it, it helps it just feels a lot better to get rid of that extra dot and you can leave it if you want but I, I just choose to get rid of it it makes it easier when you're trying to scale um, your shirts later on so we have the front part of our shirt and we're going to need to create the back because you can't have a t-shirt with just the front you need a back for it to hold on to so um, you're going to right click on the shirt pattern and you're going to go copy and you're going to right click on the grid and then you just do paste and you want to give them a little bit of space between where you're pasting them and I'll tell you why later and you want to make sure that you're not overlapping it so a little bit of space and then just click and we're going to keep this nice and easy uh, clean, neat <laughs> so we have our front of a pattern and the back of our pattern and since we don't want to have an, a dip in the back of our shirt unless that's kind of what you're going for but not in this tutorial we don't want deep um, <laughs> back neck um, back lines in our shirt so we're going to click on this little dot here and we're just going to press delete and it's going to make it uh, nice and straight oh <sighs> sorry just keeping along here keeping up we can take a break for a second mouth rest get some water hang on okay <sighs> water <laughs> alright so we have our t-shirt pattern we have our front and we have our back and we're going to press the sync button and that shows it over here in the 3d window so before we go into sewing this is a little tool tip that will help you keep your things organized as you go on to making more complex patterns you'll have like patterns all over the place and it's easy to get them uh, lost or misplaced I mean not in this case we know that this is the front and this is the back but in the future you may have a ton of parts you want to know which one's which you can actually name the parts the pattern so you can keep track of it so we're going to click on the front of our pattern and then we're going to go into the basic tab and edit the properties editor and you want to check the little box that says info and you'll see where it says name you're just going to double click on that and then you just want to name it whatever I'm going to name it front and I want to do the same thing for the back pattern and we're going to name it back and then you're going to right click on the grid and you're going to say uh, check the box that says the little thing that says show pattern name or press shift in and it'll show you this is the front and this is the back so that'll help you out when you're working on a bunch of stuff. Alright, so now we come to the fun part and that's sewing. So we have the back part of our garment selected. And whenever you're working with Marvel's Designer 2, whenever you have to put something behind your avatar, you need to flip it horizontally. Otherwise, um, it'll show up invisible in Second Life. So if your garment is showing invisible in the back, then that means that you didn't flip it before you sewed it. So you want to make sure you do that. So how do you flip it horizontally? Well, you just right click on the garment and then you do flip horizontally, just like that. And when you flip it, you'll see that the front of the garment is black and the back of it is white. And that's what you want so that you want the inside, the wrong side or the gray side pointed against your avatar and the white showing. So everything that's white will show and that's why you have to flip it because <laughs> otherwise it will be like this. This will be invisible and that's not good. So flip it. Now we get to the fun part, we're actually sewing. So we have the pattern arranged against the, the body. I like to make it a little bit higher than what it's supposed to be. And you want to make sure that it's close to your avatar. Not so close that their body goes through it or also just start sewing with your through your avatar. You want to make it close but not too close that it's going through it. That makes syncing sewing a little bit better. So let's talk about sewing. Let's talk about sewing. So up here on the top of the toolbar in the 3D window, you'll see this little box that says segment sewing. And that's what you're mostly going to do. There's free sewing, but I never really used it and mastered it. I just stuck with segment sewing because it was a lot easier. Plus, that's what I learned. So that's what you're going to learn. <laughs> so you're going to check this box that says segment sewing. And you're going to move your mouse to the edge of the dress or the garment or t-shirt. And you'll see a line pop up. It might be red, it might be blue, it, the color really doesn't matter. It's just any color. You'll just see a thick line show up. So you're going to click on that line and you're going to drag it to the next edge that you want to sew it to. In this case, the front of the t-shirt. And when you do so, you'll see a bunch of lines show up. 
So we're going to do it again on this side. Okay, see what happened just now? When we went to go sew this shoulder to that shoulder, the lines are twisted where it's straight over here. This is the right way to do it. You want to make sure that your lines are nice and straight because this tells Marvelous Designer take this edge and that edge and pull them together and hold it to uh, the line to seem straight. When it's crooked like this, it's telling Marvelous Designer pull this edge and that edge together and then twist it up a bunch. And although that may work out for some garments, in most cases it doesn't. It just causes a really nasty uh, glitch in your garment. Um, so I will show you how to correct it. If your lines are crooked, you can, in most cases, press Control Z and undo it. But if you were really far in and their lines are crooked, you can just use this um, Edit Seam Lines tool that's next to the segment sewing, and click on right-click on your lines, and then press Reverse Seam Line, and that will straighten out your edges, so you don't have to worry about it twisting. So now you're just going to go back into segment sewing and sew up all the edges that need to be sewn. The ones on the side, whoops, twisted. Uh, let's see, one on the side, like so. And you want to leave your armholes and your neck hole and the bottom unsewn because that's where your body's going to go through and you don't want it to sew through it. So once you have all your lines on nice and sewn, you're just going to press the play button and start the simulation, and you'll see that you have your t-shirt. Now if you don't like the way the collar is, if you may think it's a little too pointy, you can go and check on the edit pattern button here in the 2D window, click on the dot, press delete, and then you can use this tool next to it called the edit curvature button. And you could just drag the curve down and you'll get a nice rounded collar instead of the pointy. So you can just keep dragging it down as deep as you would like it to go. Um, but I don't think the neckline should be that deep for a t-shirt roughly about here because then you can experiment with it and do like the off shoulder thing. But I'll show you that later in another video. Okay, so that's how you make um, a t-shirt. So we are going to make a pair of pants because you know why not t-shirt and pants <laughs> why have your butt out so I'm gonna select both patterns and I'm just gonna move it over here for right now so we can get a better view of our um, avatar silhouette and I'm gonna turn off the simulation button because that saves up a bit of processing power so like before when we made our t-shirt you're just gonna check the polygon box polygon toolbox and you're gonna start at how high you want your pants to be then you're going to hold down shift and make a straight line right down the center. And you're going to stop just a little bit below the crotch because that makes it a little bit easier. Plus it stops it from wedging up inside your junk, which nobody likes. So you're going to hold shift again and you're going to make a sort of backwards L and stop right at her thigh. And again, you're going to make the next point is going to be how long you want your pants to be. I want these to be fairly long. So about here. Then you're going to go over again another to the left and make it a little bit wider than the regular leg. This helps with sewing and sinking and all that junk. So you're going to pull the line up to about her hip, make another line up to where the first line is, and then you're going to go back and meet the first line. Whoops, I missed. There you go, first line. Hopefully you didn't miss like I did. So I'm going to use the edit this button, the edit pattern tool, and I'm going to grab this line, I'm just going to hit delete, and it should straighten it out. Alright, so now we have our one side, we're going to right click on the middle, and we're going to unfold. Yay, see? Now what we're going to do is some can clean up, I'm going to clean this pattern up a bit. I'm going to select the middle button, my, the little point that was created here, and I'm going to press delete. And I'm also going to delete the dot that's here in the crotch. And the reason why I do this is because it saves time when you're sewing. If we don't delete it, we'll have to sew here and here versus when we delete this point, we just sew once right there. So that's why I always say delete the middle uh, dot in the crotch. <laughs> All right, so we have our pants pattern. We're going to do the same thing we did with the t-shirt. So right click on it and then do copy and then paste. And we're going to give it a little bit of room. And I want to make sure that these are not overlapping. It's just a habit you want to get into. Make sure that your patterns don't overlap. 
I'm going to give them their own bit of space. And I'll tell you why in a bit. So we have our back part of the pants. And we're going to right click and then flip horizontally. And we're going to bring them behind the character again. Same thing, you want to make it close to it, but not so close that, you know, in this case, the butt goes through the pattern. So you want it this close. And under the same thing for the front. And now we're going to do our segment sewing and we're just going to sew along the edges again. See the, the crotch thing right here where we're able to just use one. If we had left that dot there, we would have to sew two little parts and it's terrible. So we're just going to sew along here and make pants. Alright, so once we have everything all sewn up, we're just going to press play and we're going to start the simulation. Now you may see that there is a lot of skin coming through the clothes. Um, don't worry about that. We can fix that in Blender. It's This is just not important. If it's really bothering you, you could try making the pattern a bit bigger and that'll give you more fabric to work with. You can also turn the particle distance up a little more and that increase, increases the amount of polygons that the pants use. And But you know, it, it covers it up. But the downside of it is that you'll have a really heavy pair of pants that are, are way heavier than the pants should be. I like to stay my par particle distance down to the default 20. So it may show through, it may not. It just really depends on how much you want to use in um, your, your, your project or whatever. Um, you can also use the pattern edit tool and you can grab it and try pulling it out. But like I said, it's not a big deal. We can fix this in Blender. And when it comes to pants and stuff like that, alpha maps so <laughs> shoddy building at its best okay so now you see we have a problem here with these um, leggings they're not really pants but they're more like tights um, you'll see that the tights are overlapping the shirt and this is because the pants are in a shirt are on the same layer so when we place this here um, they're both like oh we're equal so we're just gonna do this I don't really know how to explain it any better than that um, to make you able to see it a bit, see this a little bit better, I'm going to change the pants to a different color because I always find it difficult to really give the right effect when it's all white on white. And also, when you assign patterns their own color, you're actually putting them on their own material. So that's a good way to keep things organized when you're about to export it into Blender. So I'm going to make these gray, and I'm going to take the t-shirt, and I think I'll keep the t-shirt white. The t-shirt comes to white. So now you can see that the pants are on top of the shirt. Now we want the shirt to be on top of the pants, like the pants are tucked underneath the shirt. Now we can do that by clicking on the patterns, both of them. So you click on one pattern, then you hold down shift and you click on the other. And you go down into the fabric panel and you just scroll down until you see layer. And you change the layer from any number higher than the layer it's on. So right now it's at zero. I'm going to put it on two for good measure. And you see the shirt pops on top of the pants. So that's how you can do layer clothing. I forgot how high it goes up to. I think it might go all the way up to like 999 or whatever. Um, but you don't really need it that high unless you really are layering on the clothes. In that case, I suggest you try layering in Blender or whatever rather than doing it in Marvelous. But... This is a good way to do it. So now that we have our, hang on one second. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. <laughs> All right. So now that we have our avatar uh, clothes here, it's time that we export. So what we're gonna do is export our clothes out. You do that by going to File, Export, uh, OBJ. And we're going to name these up yoga clothes because that's what I had in the last tutorial. Um, actually, this is the wrong folder. We needed a new kimono. So I'm going to name these yoga clothes. They look more like active wear, don't they? And you're going to press the M. And you're going to check the box that says select all and deselect everything. You only want the cloth shape to be checked. Nothing else. That's the only thing that's important is cloth shape. So cloth shape needs to be checked. And then when the cloth shape is checked, you're going to check those other boxes, unified UV coordinates, and remove collapsed triangle cloths. So once those are all checked, you're going to hit OK. And then that's pretty much it. Now if you want to save this for later so you can come back and 
edit the project, like make longer t-shirts or make shorter t-shirts or share this whole workspace with a friend or something and start a, a nice Marvel's designer uh, kimono pool of stuff, you can save the project. So I'll show you how to save the project properly. So you go file and you go save as and you save it as a project and you would just name it uh, yoga or whatever it is. So yoga, hit save. And it saves it. So it saves the avatar and the clothes and pattern, everything. This whole workspace is saved. So you could just give it away and work on stuff like that. So we're done pretty much here in Marvelous Designer. We're going to go over back into Blender and import our clothes. And then we can start rigging it and all the fun stuff that goes into that. So I'll see you guys over in Blender. And we'll work on it from there.